If you're a solo wedding or events videographer, you know the struggle of cameras with recording limits. Hoping that ceremony doesn't go on for more than 30 minutes, or you have to sneak up the aisle or around the back to get the recording started again. It really is painful. But what if I told you there was a way around this? Here we go now. Welcome to the first episode of Top Tip Tuesdays. Um, it's in no way associated with any other Tuesday tip videos. Um, I've always wanted to share my tips and tricks from my filmmaking process and this is going to be my way of doing it. Um, some of it you might know and some of it you might not know. So if you want to see more videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe. The first thing you need is an intervalometer. These can be found quite cheap for about 20 quid and are normally used to create time lapses on cameras that don't have a time lapse function. Essentially, they simulate a shutter button press at an interval of your choosing, um, so you don't have to sit there and press a shutter button every 10 seconds, for example. All you have to do is connect the intervalometer to your camera and set it to press a shutter button after 30 minutes. Then after pressing record on your camera, you want to press start on the intervalometer and after 30 minutes the camera will stop recording and the intervalometer will tell it to start again. Um, you might want to set it to a couple of seconds later just so the camera has enough time to buffer or save that video file to the SD card, but it really is genius. Now I can't go for every brand, but to do this on Sony cameras, you do have to go into the settings and change a setting that says push shutter button to record to on, um, just so the shutter button actually controls the video. I normally I have this off and I have the C1 custom button to record, but in order to use the intervalometer, you do need to have push shutter button to record on. Also the 30 minute recording limit is no longer a law, but manufacturers are still adding this to their cameras and you have to wonder whether this is due to overheating. Um, so I'd still check on the camera, maybe every 45 minutes to an hour, especially if you're shooting on an a7 III in a 4K in a hot room, or if you're shooting on the Canon R5. I don't even know if that trick will work on that camera, but um, if you're shooting at 1080 in any camera, you really shouldn't have any problems. The other thing is you do lose a few seconds, um, especially if you're going to be leaving some seconds for buffer, um, but obviously that would probably be the case anyway as the camera would still have to buffer or you'd have to run up the aisle and turn off the video, turn it back on again. Um, in the case of my particular model, it doesn't count the seconds very well, so I've got it set to 30 minutes and 5 seconds, but I think when the camera gets to 30 minutes and stops, this is still on about 29 minutes and 45 seconds. So I do lose about 20 seconds of footage, um, but I, then I just make sure that my other camera is recording and on at a different time, so I don't lose anything and I can just switch to the B camera. Thanks for watching this episode of Top Tip Tuesdays. I'll be back next week for more. And if you like it, smash that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below what you'd like to see on a Top Tip Tuesday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.